Now that we've taken a look at some of the applications of the derivative in business and economics, we're going to transition to applications of the antiderivative or the integral in business and economics. In this video, we're going to answer the question, how do we find consumer and producer surplus? And to set this up again, we're going to start with a little bit of a vocabulary lesson around what is consumer and producer surplus. And I apologize if my uh, explanation is not as good as your economics instructor. We'll do the best we can looking at this idea of supply and demand from a mathematician, not an economist. So if we take a look at a supply and demand curve, and you've probably seen these before. The y-axis is the price of the item, and the x-axis is the number of items that are actually demanded. Well, it turns out that if there's, there's this thing called the supply curve, which we'll do in blue, we'll call that s of x. That is the supply, which tells us the price per unit at which producers are willing to supply x items. So as the price goes up, they're willing to provide more items at that price. At a low price, they're not going to sell a lot. At a high price, they're willing to sell more. The problem is the consumer has the opposite view. The consumer says that as the has this demand function, which we will call d of x, which is the price per unit, the customer or the consumer is willing to pay if x items are available. And the idea is if an item is very rare and there's a very small supply, they're willing to pay a higher price. But as more items become available and it becomes more common, the consumer wants to pay a lower price for a more common commodity. Well, there's one happy point where these two are going to cross each other. That point we call the equilibrium point. I'll call that xe comma pe, which represent the price the consumer is willing to pay when x items are produced. In other words, the supply and demand balance each other out in this perfect location so that everything comes out ideal for both the consumer and the supplier. If I kind of graph this visually, we're producing x sub e items, and they're being sold at p sub e price. And what's interesting about that is the customer was willing to pay this high price of this curve, but they only had to pay this lower price at the equilibrium. In other words, there is this area of savings to the customer. That area of savings we're going to call the consumer surplus.
CS is the consumer surplus. It is the savings to the customer, or better to say, to the consumer. for paying less than willing to pay. The idea was I was willing to pay $100 for that item, but I only had to pay $20. So I had a savings of, of $80 between 100 and 20 but the consumer is not the only one that's saving in this situation. Notice the producer producing their supply was willing to produce a supply as low as the bottom of the curve, but they ended up producing a supply up at the top of the curve for a higher price. That represents the producer's surplus. PS is what I'm going to call it. That is the producer's surplus. And that is the savings to the producer for selling at a higher price than willing. So with my example earlier, I was willing to pay $100 for an item, but I only ended up paying 20 The producer was willing to sell it for 5 but they ended up selling it for 20 So I, as the customer, have saved $80, and the producer has made an extra $15 based on everybody's worst case scenario. So when we hit this equilibrium point, both the consumer and the producer are coming out ahead. The consumer saving money, the producer making more money. Everyone is happy if we can hit this equilibrium point. What we're going to be interested in today with this application is finding out how much. How much did the producer save? How much did the consumer save? What is that producer surplus? And what is that consumer surplus? So now that we've gotten through our little economics lesson, let's move into part B here to see if we can look at how we can find the consumer surplus, which we're going to abbreviate CS. Well, if I look up at my graph, the consumer surplus in green is the area under the green curve and above the red line at PE. We know to get the area between two curves, we have to subtract the two functions. So we'll take the green curve minus the red line. So to find our consumer surplus, it's the integral of the green curve, the demand function, minus the red curve, which is that equilibrium price, dx. And we want to get the total area that goes from where we start at 0 to where we end at xe. So for consumer surplus, we're going from 0 to the equilibrium number of the demand minus the equilibrium price, dx. This is going to be the function you'll want to know as you solve problems like, let's say the demand for a product is d of x equals 4,000 minus 6x squared. We want to find 
the consumer surplus if the equilibrium price per unit is $1,600. So we know that $1,600 is the equilibrium price. That's the price equilibrium. We don't know the equilibrium number, but what we do know is the demand function tells us that price. So the demand function, d of x is the $1,600, is equal to 4,000 minus 6x squared. So let's solve for that equilibrium x that matches that 1,600 price. If I subtract 4,000 from both sides, I get negative 2,400 equals negative 6x squared. Divide by negative 6, and I get 400 equals x squared. Take the square root of both sides, and x equals plus or minus 20. But I'm not really going to have negative 20 items, so our xe must be the positive 20 units. Now we're ready to use our formula. We know our equilibrium price. We know our equilibrium units. We know our demand function. So we have the integral from 0 to the equilibrium units of 20 of the demand function, 4,000 minus 6x squared minus the equilibrium price, which is 1,600 dx. Solving this integral will give us the consumer surplus. Before I solve, though, I'm going to combine like terms. So I have the integral from 0 to 20 of 2,400 minus 6x squared dx. Integrating, that's going to give us 2,400x minus x cubed divided by 3. 6 over 3 is 2. Integrated from 0 to 20. So we've got 2,400 times 20 minus 2 times 20 cubed. And we still need to technically plug the 0 in. But what's nice is when we plug the 0 into both parts, they're all going to go to 0. So I would just plug this into my calculator. Uh, 2,400 times 20 minus 2 times 20 cubed. And that's going to give me 32,000 dollars. OK, let's interpret that result then that we just found. We found three things coming together at equilibrium. First, 20 units were demanded at equilibrium. So when 20 units are demanded and purchased, at an equilibrium price of, price is 1,600, the total savings to the consumer is $32,000. And we've got our interpretation of the equilibrium price and the consumer surplus. Let's go then to take a look at the supplier side of things. Let's see if we can find the producer surplus. Which we call the PS. 
We want to see how much money the producer is saving at this equilibrium price. And if I look again at my picture, we want the blue area this time, the producer's surplus, where the producer is selling at a higher price than they were willing to sell for. Notice that blue area is between the equilibrium price and the blue curve S of x. So to get that total area, we'll subtract PE minus the S of x and integrate it. So we're going to integrate from 0 to the equilibrium number of units produced of the red equilibrium price minus the supply dx. This is the second function we need to know as we attempt to solve for producer surplus this time. Let's say a manufacturer will make x thousand guitar stands available. each year when price per stand is the supply function 0 0.01 plus 0 0.1 times the cubed root of x squared dollars. we're going to find the producer's surplus if the equilibrium price per stand is $1 and 61 cents. All right, again, they're giving us the equilibrium price. So the price at equilibrium is 1.61. We don't know the demand at uh, that 161 price. But fortunately, we can plug that into our function. So s of x which tells us that price is 161 equals 0 0.01 plus 0 0.1 times the cubed root of x squared. And we'll solve for x to see the equilibrium number of units produced. If I subtract 0 0.01, I get 1.6 equals 0 0.1 times the cubed root of x squared. Divide by 0.1, I get 16 equals the cube root of x squared. If I take the square root of both sides, I'll get 4 equals the cube root of x. And if I cube both sides, I'll get 64 equals x. And so that must be my equilibrium number of units produced. So I go to my integral. My formula says we take the integral from 0 to the equilibrium x, which we found out was 64. Our equilibrium price is 1.61 minus the function. And it's important I put that function in parentheses because I want to subtract the entire thing, not just the first term, of 0.01 plus 0.1 cubed root of x squared dx. Solving this will give me my producer surplus. First, I'm going to distribute the negative through. So we have 0 to 64 of 1.61 minus 0.01 minus 0.1. And I'm going to change this to x to the 2 thirds dx, because we know that the index on the radical 
becomes the denominator on the fractional exponent. Combining like terms, I have the integral from 1 to 64 of 1.6 minus 0.1 x to the 2 thirds dx. We're now ready to integrate this, which will give us 1.6x minus 0.1 times. If I increase the exponent by 1, we get x to the 5 thirds times the reciprocal of 3 fifths. And we're going to integrate that from 0 to 64. Plugging in the 64, we get 1.6 times 64 minus 0.1 times 3 fifths times 64 to the 5 thirds, which will come out to be 40.96. And that then is our producer's surplus. Let's interpret this result. We know that 64,000 items are going to be produced and purchased because the units were 1,000. So when 64,000 guitar stands are produced, at a price of 161 per stand. That was our price. The producer surplus or profit and the units, again, are in thousands. We're doing thousands of guitar stands. So we're going to have this in thousands of dollars. So if I convert this, it's going to be $40,960. And that then is how we find the producer's surplus. So consumer and producer surplus is what we're taking a look at today. You can actually find both at the same time. Time. And I want to do one example where we do just that. Let's say that the monthly demand for a particular item is related to the price of the item. by the function d of x equals negative x squared plus 34.8x plus 1928, where price is in dollars. And x is thousands of units. A manufacturer will supply x thousand. units when the price is s of x equals 1.4x squared minus 50x plus $1,480. You're being asked to find consumer and producer's surplus.
Just like before, we need to find the equilibrium price and the equilibrium number of units before we can find the surplus. What we know, though, is that when the demand and supply functions intersect, or when they're both equal to each other, that we have our equilibrium point. So we're going to see where the demand equals the supply. When negative x squared plus 34.8x plus 1928 equals 1.4x squared minus 50x plus 1480. And if we add everything to the right side, we end up with 2.4x squared minus 84.8 minus 448. And to get rid of the decimal, I'm going to multiply everything by 10 on both sides. That way, we get 0 equals 24x squared minus 848x minus 4,480. And then I'll factor this to try and solve for x. We have a common factor of 8, which leaves behind 3x squared minus 106x minus 560. Continuing to factor, 3x squared is 3x times x. And after a bit of work, 560 is 14 times 40. If the 40 is negative and the 14 is positive, we'll end up with the negative 106 in the middle after the 40 is multiplied by 3. And if you weren't sure how to factor that, you could have used the quadratic formula to find x. That would give you the same final result. But our choices for x are going to be either negative 14 thirds or positive 40 after each factor is set equal to 0. Well, we're not going to make negative items. So we must know then that our equilibrium production is 40,000 items. And to find the equilibrium price, we just need to stick that 40,000 into either one of the functions. It doesn't matter which. So I'll just plug it into the demand function. So we have negative 40,000 squared plus 34.8 times 40 plus 1928. And that will give me my equilibrium price, which when we run that through on our calculator, I believe gives us 1720. Now that we have our equilibrium price, we can find our consumer surplus and our producer's surplus. Consumer surplus was the integral from 0 to the equilibrium production of the demand function, which was negative x squared plus 34.8x plus 1928 minus the equilibrium price of 1720 dx. The producer surplus, using that formula, is the integral from 0 to the equilibrium production of the price, 1720, minus the supply, which we have to put in parentheses is 1.4x squared minus 50x plus 1480 dx. Solving both of these will give me my consumer surplus and my producer surplus for this situation. First, doing the consumer surplus, I'm going to combine like terms. So we have the integral from 0 to 40 of negative x squared plus 34.8x plus 208 dx, which gives us negative 1 third x cubed plus Dividing by 2 gives us 17.4x squared plus 208x. 
integrated from 0 to 40. Plugging that in, we get 1 third times 40 cubed plus 17.4 times 40 squared plus 208 times 40 minus, and then we plug the 0 in. But plugging the 0 in will make each of these terms go to 0. So our final consumer surplus, if I put this into the calculator, is $14,826.67, approximately, when we round. Solving the producer surplus function, we have the integral from 0 to 40 of 1720. I'm going to distribute the negative through minus 1.4x squared plus 50x minus 1480dx. I'm going to combine like terms. So we have the integral from 0 to 40 of negative 1.4x squared plus 50x plus 240dx, which gives us x cubed times negative 1.4 divided by 3. It's an ugly decimal, so I'll leave it like that and have the calculator worry about it. Plus x squared dividing by 2 gives us 25 plus 240x integrated from 0 to 40. Plugging in the 40, we get negative 1.4 over 3 times 40 cubed plus 25 times 40 squared plus 240 times 40. And then we subtract plugging in the 0, but those all go to 0, which gives us a final producer surplus of 1,009 or $19,733.33. And so what we see is if 40,000 items are produced and sold at that equilibrium price of 1720, the consumer is saving $14,826 and the producer is saving or making an additional $19,733. And this is really the best case scenario for both groups. Everyone saves or makes money and everyone is happy with that equilibrium price and development or supply point. So now it's your turn to find some equilibrium prices, equilibrium uh, demand, and also the consumer and producer surplus. Practice several of these. Come to class with questions, and we'll discuss them more. We'll see you then.